Pisgah is a very unique place. We have iconic sites like Looking Glass Falls, John Rock, and Looking Glass Rock, which are wonderful hikes. We have visitation that is more akin to a national park than a national forest. We love that our trails are heavily utilized, but it does present quite the challenge for protected area managers like myself. From hikers to horseback riders to mountain bikers, and trying to maintain a trail system that meets the needs of all of them has been our greatest challenge. We know that they don't have the numbers of personnel that they used to have. There's just no way that you can maintain, you know, over 400 miles of trail with a small team and a very, very limited budget. We have a $6,000 trail budget every single year. And if the groups like Backcountry Horsemen don't do not only their fair share, but go the extra mile, uh, then we, we can't maintain these trails. So really, partners and volunteers are the lifeblood of the Pisgah Ranger District. And uh, this is the rest of the story. What about horses has been special compared to those animals? I can put it in a nutshell. The outside of a horse is good for the inside of my soul. When they're born and young, they're all gray with white, just solid gray. And he came over to me and started nuzzling with me and let me pick him up. And uh, it, we've been together ever since. Yeah, Jazz is 21 by the well, he's 22 this year. And Bud is 16. Yeah, that's my boy. Yeah. Because of population explosion and more and more people using the forest, if we're not careful, the mules and the horses are getting pushed out. I hate to put it that way, but unless we're there actively involved and have folks that are working in Raleigh at the state level to secure rights for equestrians, like the North Carolina Horse Council, we could lose what we have historically had for hundreds of years. You know, you can't take ATVs way out in the woods where they're going to clear trails. Kind of the only way to get chainsaws out, or the most logical way, is on horseback. I first heard of backcountry horsemen when I was uh, working in the mountain bike industry. And I um, hadn't ridden horses since, you know, my high school years. Just really into mountain bikes and racing collegiate on the mountain bike team. And um, I just remember a lot of avid mountain bikers talking so highly of backcountry horsemen. They have a, have a really great reputation in the mountain bike industry, which is super rare, because a lot of times those two um, communities kind of bump heads. I always heard about them and all the awesome work that they do, and I just remember thinking like, wow, that's so cool. I want to be a part of something like that, but I don't, I don't ride horses. Yeah, there's work involved. It's a working group. It's not a social group and uh, the people we've got coming on are very much aware of that. We're moving timber off trails, we're putting reverse grades in and building bridges and packing fish into for wildlife into secluded lakes, pack out, and we're in there for five, 10 days at a time. And uh, we're all getting older, uh, the old backcountry horseman group, uh, but we're still doing what we do as long as we can. I'm 74, and we got a lot of folks uh, that are getting up there in age. What does my heart good is we've got a lot of people in their 30s and 20s uh, that now have horses in a pasture, and, and they're not sitting on their laurels. They're out here joining the group. Okay, I'm gonna let you grab the pack saddle. Ready? the saddle? Yep. Let's see. That, oh, heavier than I thought. I got the light stuff. I want to learn from Tom. Tom's been doing this for years and he's done big pack trips out in Montana. Right there? Yep. 
slide it all the way down. It is. It's it's scary when you don't have um, yeah someone to guide you. Do just that loop. Yeah. Okay. That's it. Right about there, just above the withers. Yep. In fact, you can move it back a little bit because okay. you're centering the load when you're packing. You're, okay. You're not going to be having it up so high. I'm hoping that we can build a community where we can support people who want to get out and learn because it really is, it's like the best feeling ever. <laughs> hey Clover. I just try to think of like all the trees that would be down on trails still like way out in the woods if it weren't for these guys. I think it's just really important to keep the tradition going and pull in some young people to carry the torch. The youth is the future of backcountry horsemen and Pisgah, most definitely. We couldn't do the work that we do without them. They work so hard and they put their time and their effort into beautifying this place for everybody to experience. And I just think that's a very worthy cause on their part. Again, we're going to clear trails, so if you have your helmets with you, bring them. Okay, let's mount up. We gotta stop being the best kept secret. Bottom line, we need to make sure people out throughout the United States knows about backcountry horsemen and what we're doing. I think everybody that enjoys our trails understands how important the work that they do is. Hold up back there. One group, whether it's Sorba or whether it's Carolina Mountain Club or whether it's Backcountry Horsemen of Pisgah, cannot do what is necessary to maintain the trails in Pisgah National Forest. Collaboration in the forest is what we need. It's a positive attitude that gets the things done. It's together is how we make a difference. It's not Tom Thomas making the difference. It's a team effort. It's everybody's hand in the pot that makes it better. <laughs>